What keeps a square from moving? Square roots. Get at the roots, hold it down. So why am I talking about square roots? Well, we'll be using those shortly when we start talking about distance in two dimensions. So we're going to take a look at distance in one dimension and then two dimensions. So first of all, just uh, take an example. Sarah is at mile marker 9. She's running a marathon. And Jane is at mile marker 14. How do we find the distance between them? Well, you naturally would subtract 9 from 14 or 14 minus 9. One thing to note, notice how I subtract 9 from 14, but it comes after the subtraction sign. Kind of a strange little thing with the English language. So why does subtracting work to find the distance? Well, I'm going to go back to the segment addition postulate, which we already talked about. So if I write 9 plus the distance between them, I will get 14. Then I can subtract 9 from both sides using the subtraction property of equality, which means I can subtract the same thing from both sides. And I get the distance equals 14 minus 9, which is what we were doing before. Now we're going to try and extend this to the general formula for distance. So how can I find that? Well, first of all, let me define some points and some variables. I'm going to say that's the distance d. The, the uh, beginning point we'll call x1 and the end point we'll call x2. So one thing before I finalize my formula, all right, the domain for distance, how do I get that? So which of the following are not reasonable values for distance or length? Is 2.5 inches reasonable? Sure. How about negative 1 centimeters? We never really talk about negative distances in real life, so no, that's not a reasonable distance. How about square root of 3 feet? Well, that's about 1.7 something and it goes on forever. Sure, it's irrational, but it is a real number and it is positive, so that's allowed. How about pi yards? Well, that's also positive and rational, so that's allowed. Negative 3.5 kilometers? Not allowed. No negative distances. And 3 fourths of a mile? Sure. Even 5 divided by pi and even 0 feet are fine as long as we don't get negatives. So the range or domain, depending how you're talking about it, for distance includes all non-negative real numbers. So the distance formula in one dimension is going to use something called absolute value, which you should have seen in middle school. This makes sure that the domain for distance is zero and positive real numbers. So revisiting our formula, remember how we could subtract to get distance, and I'll go ahead and do that. I add on this little extra bit here, which is the absolute value sign to guarantee that I get a positive distance. Now, distance in two dimensions. How do we handle that? So first of all, um, if I'm trying to find this distance, I'm going to plot a special point, 1 comma 6. So what's special about this point for this graph? Well, to get to point C from A, I only have to go in the x direction. To get to point C from B, I only have to go, and well actually here I'm going in the y direction. Here I'm going in the x direction. The only thing that is changing here is x's. The only thing changing here is y's. So if I'm looking for the distance, I only have to find the difference between 6 and 3 and the absolute value of that. So this is like our marathon problem. To find, which in this case would be 3. To find BC, same thing. I'm going to subtract 5 minus 1 and I get 4. Okay, so I found the distance from A to C and the distance from C to B. But remember, we're supposed to find the distance from A to B. So if I'm looking for that, can I add this 3 and that 4 to get this? And why or why not? Well, no, you can't really add them because if I did this, let's say this was 3 miles and this was 4 miles, then 3 plus 4, four would be 7 miles. And I would think it would actually be shorter to walk straight from A to B. So I don't think I can add 3 and 4. Well, then how can we find AB? We'll use the Pythagorean theorem. Why can I use the Pythagorean theorem? 
because these lines are perpendicular to the horizontal grid lines here, which means that's a right angle and this is a right triangle. So I'm going to use this leg, AC squared, plus BC squared equals AB squared. Substituting in the values, I get 3 squared plus 4 squared equals AB squared. 9 plus 16 equals AB squared, or 25 is AB squared. But I'm looking for AB, not AB squared. So how do I undo squaring? Well, I undo multiplying by dividing. I undo adding by subtracting. I undo squaring by square rooting. That has, there's where my joke came from. So square root of 25 means I'm going backwards to the number that multiplies itself to make 25, and that would be 5. So on further reflection, why does order matter in subtracting? How do we ensure that we get the right range of answers for distance? And how does the method for finding distance change when we go from one dimension to two dimensions? What could it be for three dimensions? So we're going to go to a more general rule for distances in two dimensions.